In this video, we're going to cover how to start a basic spreadsheet. Uh, say in this example, you're a teacher and you want to go ahead and track the exam results for your students. Well, that's a simple application you can use an Excel spreadsheet for. And as we go through the motions here, I'm going to introduce to you some of the additional features working with data in cells within rows and columns. The first thing you're going to want is the title for your spreadsheet. So typically if you click in your top left hand cell or cell A1, this is where you can type your title. Now before you start typing anything, whether it's a number or whether it's text, whichever cell is selected or your active cell is the cell that will start to receive your data input. So once again, I've clicked on cell A1 and I'm going to type in my title for this spreadsheet. And since I'm a history teacher, in this example, I'm going to type in history class, final exam results. Now, hitting enter will take me down to the next row, so I'm going to go ahead and do so. But before I do that, take a look at how the title or what I've typed into that cell appears not only within cell A1, notice it also spans across columns B and C. I'm going to talk to you about how to center a title across a spreadsheet in a little bit. Also notice that over here in what is called the formula bar, that text also appears there, which is helpful when it comes time to edit or make changes to the text that you've entered. Hitting the enter key, I'm going to get transported down to the next row and now I'm going to put the headers in for my columns and I'm going to want to include my student names so I'm going to type in student name and then when I hit tab I go one cell over to the right now you see how this the student name column heading extends over column B don't worry about that I'll show you how to expand or widen your columns. But clicking in column B, I'm going to go ahead and type in the exam result heading. And then I'm going to hit tab again and type in grade. I'm going to hit enter. Okay. Now you see what happens. Um, all the columns in a spreadsheet are fixed width. That is right off the bat. But you have the ability to adjust the width to fit the entries contained within your column. Because you see how student name is now getting cut off at the end of that column and exam result as well. Well, we're going to go ahead and fix that. First thing I want to do here is I want to work with the title. I want to make the title stand out a little bit. It is, after all, my heading. Now, I see how it expands or extends across columns B and C, as I mentioned. Now, however, if I click in cell A1, I see the text that exists within that cell up here in the formula bar. If I click in cell B1, which is column B, row 1, I see nothing over here in the formula bar. The same thing for C. That clearly indicates to me that where I see history class final exam results, it really exists only within column A, row 1. So I'm going to highlight that cell and then I can use the formatting icons here from my home tab on my Excel ribbon and I can click on the bold. Notice that there's also a keyboard shortcut, Control B, but I click the icon and that bolded that title or that heading. Now I'm also going to increase the font size and I have this little drop down here. I'm going to increase the font size to make it stand out a little bit. Now one of the nice features of many of the aspects here, and as you see I'm doing it in Excel 2007, is if you're going to apply a change to the look or an aspect of a component on your spreadsheet, in many cases you could just hover over your different options and see those options actually take effect in the background and apply themselves before you actually commit to the change by clicking on what you want. This makes it very helpful to see 
how your results are going to appear before you actually make your choice. So you can make the best choice you want. Um, I'm going to go ahead and choose 16 point or 16 size font by clicking. Now I'm going to come down here and I see, well, I clearly have to adjust the width of the column. Now, the shape of your cursor is going to vary depending upon what you're trying to do in a spreadsheet. Typically, it's a little three-dimensional little plus symbol. However, if I move that over to the columns, I notice I get a little downward pointing arrow. And then when I go in between columns, it changes again to a two-way arrow. So it's very important you take note of the different changes in the look of the cursor because when you are trying to do different things, it will take on different shapes. Now if I move it directly in between A and B, and it has to be up here where the letters are, it can't be on the body of the spreadsheet itself, I can then left click my mouse, drag that column over to the right, and widen it. And notice as I do so, it tells me the dimensions in terms of the width of the column if I hold my left button in. So if I'm looking for a specific dimension, I can drag it out until it hits that number and release it. Now I'm going to do the same thing between column B and column C. It's helpful to have that dimension displayed because if I say, okay, I've made that 15 wide, I can do the same thing for my column B and drag that out so I know that the dimensions are the same for columns A and columns B. And if I like, I can bring column C out to 15 as well. All right. Now, if you need to make a change to something you've already entered, there's a couple ways of doing that. One way is you can click in the cell. You can then make the changes up here in the formula bar. Maybe I want this to read student names instead of student name, and I just add the S on the end. All right, that will take effect. I can also double click in the cell. And notice when I double click in the cell, I get that little vertical insertion point, which would allow me to edit directly in the cell itself. And maybe I want to leave that read to read student name, and I backspace over it. I click outside the cell and that change takes effect. A third way to edit text within a cell is to use the F2 key. The F2 key, as I just hit it, will automatically perform the same task as if I were to double click the cell. It gives me the vertical insertion point, which I can backspace or use the arrow keys to move around and then I can make necessary changes to the contents within the cell. All right, now I'm going to add some student names in here. And I'm going to hit Enter. Since that's the standard behavior within Excel, each time I hit Enter, it moves down a row. And I'm going to type in a few additional names. Enter again. Enter again. All right, so I've got four names here. All right, I'm going to come over to the exam result column and I'm going to type in a number representing the score that they received on the exam. And I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to put in the results for the next person here, John Smith in this case. I come down again. And Judy did great. She aced the exam, so she got a 100. All right, then I'm going to come over to the grade column, and you can use formulas to determine the grade based on a certain scale, but we'll cover formulas a little bit later. I'm going to go ahead and manually enter the letter grade that each of these students received on their final exam. And there we go. Everybody did pretty well. All right, now. If I look at what I have so far, I might want to make additional uh, visual or cosmetic changes. One thing I notice is the alignment. And this is a very interesting uh, aspect of Excel. It's helpful to be aware of. 
If you type a number into a cell, it will right align itself or align it to the right of that column or cell. If you type in a letter or a word, it will left align itself automatically. If you want to change the alignment, note that you have the alignment icon group up in your ribbon on the home tab and you can use the icons to set your alignment preferences. And there's a few ways of applying formatting changes. One of which is to just highlight the range of cells you'd like to make the change to. Say I'd like to center these within the cell, within the column. I can highlight just the range of cells I want to apply that change to and click on the appropriate alignment icon. But since I only highlighted a range, if I come down and add in another student and then type in their score, well, that's going to go ahead and continue the alignment sequence. You can also adjust the formatting for the entire column, columns or rows. If you move your cursor over the column name or letter and click the left mouse button, it will highlight that column all the way down to the very bottom of that spreadsheet, over 1,048,000 rows worth. You can then use any of your formatting icons to apply a change and this will ensure that it will carry all the way down that column. So if I wanted to click on the center line, that will align everything in that column to the center. I'm going to do the same thing for my column C. I'm going to click right on the letter C. I notice that uh, when I move over that letter, I get that downward pointing arrow. I click on the center alignment and that ensures for me that columns B and C now are center aligned all the way down my screen. All right. Something else I might want to do is I might want to highlight by clicking and dragging across the headings in this little spreadsheet here to include student name, exam result, and grade. And I'm going to hit the bold icon. And I'm going to make sure that those are centered as well by clicking on the center icon on the alignment group to make them stand out a little bit. 